Kiki, you should have knew this wasn't going to be good when Miss Wanda pull up at your door with finger waves, a freeze, and a fresh twist in the back. That's that fight in here. Y'all ready to get into it? Kill the music! Oh, yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. back. I drop a player like it's nothing. It ain't working out. Now, no debate, a fuck discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking my dial is money. I ain't loving. Let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Baby, why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving. I ain't tripping. Lost another spouse. I'm just a boss. It's in my blood. No, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my key. Cause oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. Back with another video. We're here to discuss Love and Marriage Huntsville. Season 4, Episode 6. Um, I wind the Kiki. I don't know. Girl, I ain't even gonna put that down there. I say what I say. But yeah, um, so let's get into the episode because this was a lot this week. So the episode opens up, Kimmy and Mel and Stormy all meet up for Taco Tuesday. They all wear all black, dressed in all black, like the omen. Yeah, they all wear all black, talking about it's a coincidence, girl, bye. Y'all don't all just be wearing no all black. But I ain't gonna lie, Mel, you looked cute in your all black, girl. You looked it good. I liked it. It was cute. It was real cute. It was real, real cute. But they all pull up. Um, they start talking about Kimmy coming back off her vacation because, you know, she ain't never been nowhere with her husband. Her husband ain't never took her nowhere, so everywhere they go, they got to bring up her having a glow after this vacation. Girl, if y'all don't get in the car and go up to Atlanta or do something together, goddamn, it ain't that deep, child. It is not that deep. But yeah, Kimmy let her know she's got a glow, and she was just like, oh yeah, thank you, but uh, about your pajama jammy jam, um, you thought that was a successful event? Mel Hollow, well, yeah, I thought it was successful until y'all started y'all BS with um Tiffany. And Kimmy was like, y'all, because I ain't gonna lie, I don't feel like Kimmy started nothing with Tiffany. I think they had their little, you know, talk that needed to be had. But when Stormy came over there, Stormy did turn it up. And I gotta be woman enough to admit, Stormy, you was dead wrong, but I just wanted you to give it to Tiff how she gave it to everybody last season. So yeah, that's petty, but I did what I did and said what I said. But yeah, Stormy, you was wrong. You did start the BS. But Stormy brings up the fact that she had uh, a drink with her and she's going to try to see her for who she is and not judge her off her past. Girl, you don't even know her past. You just know what you saw on TV. I mean, dang, you ain't never get a girl a chance. Then she hollers, oh yeah, because you know, I feel like she is who I met, but I'm going to give her a chance. Girl, look. Stormy, if you don't get your face from doing this, Every dog on season, girl, we ain't gonna see you no more either because you just really not doing nothing at this point. But, um, Kimmy brings up the fact that she was surprised Kiki was there, but yet Destiny and, you know, Tiffany, I mean, not Destiny and Tiffany, Destiny and uh, Tisha was not. And Mel hollers, oh, yeah, you know, I, I invited her. We, we're cool, you know, we have a mutual best friend, so that means she's not your friend. And um, I've been knowing her mutual best friend for about 14 years. And, you know, sometimes me and um, Kiki, we talk on the phone. You know, I be helping her out because she's trying to do X, Y, and Z. So, you know, I thought it was good to invite her. Child, even Kimmy was looking like, girl, if you don't stop with all that cap. Is this my hand my head? I'm sorry, y'all. Kimmy was looking like, girl, stop it. You, that, really? Kimmy even got in her confessionals and said she felt like it was a method to the madness. Oh, uh, yeah, she was being messy. She invited that girl to that pajama jammy jam because she wanted her to get out there and spill the tea on, um, on Tisha and her husband. Because remember, she's been saying that Maurice or Marceau, I'm sorry, been cheating all these seasons and Tisha's acting like it don't matter and it don't, ha it didn't happen. You just brought her there to doggone confirm that. Just like Kimmy said, she ain't never seen this girl at none of your events. Why all of a sudden now? Somebody out here make it make sense. And I know you Mella stands, y'all ain't gonna wanna hear that. But at the end of the day, she is not that cool with that girl. Mel said that they she know her through a mutual best friend and they talk on the phone. That is not a friend. Period. Y'all can say what y'all want. But anyway, so yeah, Kimmy was like, yeah, I didn't really Kimmy wasn't buying it. And I don't think none of us really are, are either. But Kimmy turns around and invites her to a um to Jalen's housewoman. And she said, Hey, look, I know you beefing with them and everybody on the case. But I know you you deal with Jalen, you like Jalen, I would like to invite you to the party. And then Mel goes, well, who all going to be there? And you know, every time you invite a black person somewhere and they say, who all going to be there? That's because they're looking for the wrong name for you to say. And then they could be like, I ain't pulling up. 
But either way, Kimmy said, well, you know, I got to invite Maurice and, um, well, Marceau and Tisha. That's family. She was like, and I was going to invite Martel, but since y'all, you know, since you don't want to really have them around, I'm inviting you. So now Mel takes this and goes, oh, so now you're inviting me. What happened to Mr. Good Guy Martel? Mar Martel is a good guy. Kimmy said, well, he is a good guy. He's just, his shit done spilled over to my table, yes. And for that, I'm not dealing with him. But I said what I said. I can say it in front of you like I said it before. He is a good guy. He's not all bad. Like, what's the problem? And for the life of me, Mel, just because you feel a way about your husband don't mean everybody else, or ex-husband, don't mean everybody else should. Even if she don't deal with Martel right now, that is not her place or your place for, to make her feel the way that you feel about your ex-husband. That was your husband. Mel getting the holly, yeah, because at least now she gets to see how it feels, how he was treating me, um, you know, when nobody wanted to listen to me. I get it, but that was your husband. You married him. What did you want everybody to do? Just automatically hate him? Like, it's really giving, you do be wanting people to pick sides. Because I ain't gonna lie, Destiny said, it was her lying ass, and we ain't even gonna get to her yet. But Destiny said that you had the girl to not do the event with her. The girl got on Instagram and said it wasn't like that. But you given it is like that because you sitting up there mad with people because they still cool with that man. That's not cool. That's childish, immature, and childish. Like, no. You, you don't get to pick who people friends are. That's just how, not how things work. But Mel says she'll pull up. I don't know. Let's move on. Now we get into Destiny. Girl, Destiny pops up at Martel house with an off-the-shoulder sweater. It must have been cold because Martel go, where your coat at? <laughs> She wanted to give a little shoulder. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she pulls up to the uh house talking about she want to pop up on him to see what's going on with uh with Mel to see how she could mend this and see what how Mel is. Girl, Mel told you she don't want to be your friend. What did you ask him or tell for? And it ain't like he gonna help you be your friend. Like that girl already told you out her own mouth she don't fuck with you. Like, why is you trying to find out how to be her friend? It's giving desperate. You ain't got no other friends. Girl, they've been finding you up online all week since you said you've been on that public and assist public assistance. The people is saying you a damn lie. I saw on Scotty by Nature TV, he had read some um text messages between I guess somebody that you know and somebody else. I can't remember the law. Go go to Scotty by Nature TV and check it out. But basically, they were saying you a lying ass bitch. You be marrying all uh, men for money. You definitely cheated. I called it. Now, this is all alleged because this is what the people say. This ain't what I say. But I did say you cheated. I got the video. I think I made a little short of it. I did say you cheated. But the girl said you be lying. And you just using people for money. And you was trying to use Lubby Aries for his money. But Lubby Aries got the hell up out of him. As he should. If that's the truth. But, um, yeah, girl. We don't trust you, Destiny. You a damn lie. And you know, you did this to yourself. Ain't nobody asked you to get up there and say you ain't getting no PPP, but you was getting uh, welfare assistance, public assistance. You brought it on yourself. But let's get back to the dog on show. Martel asked Destiny the last time she talked to Mel, and Mel was like, oh, funny you brought that up. We actually went out and had coffee, and she got up and stormed off and said she don't want nothing to do with me. Um, that should be enough. Why is you over there talking to Martel then? I'm confused. I, it can't be me. I ain't running behind no bitch to be their friend. I don't care how long we've been friends. If I got to do all that fat, it's over. I ain't running behind nobody to be their friend. But, um, basically, Destiny feels like Mel wants or wanted her to cut Martel off. Because, you know, she came in, I'm going to see my longtime friend. Girl, you could have just said that to, um, Mel. We didn't need to know that. But... It is childish to say you need to cut him off because we're not married no more. That is very childish. And Martel goes, yeah, that's how she is. She just want to turn everybody against me. See, see, see. Martel, shut your milk dud head ass up. Because I ain't gonna lie. Both of y'all get on my goddamn nerves. I Let me take the heat off of her and put it on you. She should want everybody to beef with your crazy ass. Because you're dirty. You drug that girl through hell and high water for the last three seasons. Now you want to sit up there and play the victim? Go sit your crazy ass down, Martel. Go sit it down. But yeah, um, he up there hollering, oh yeah, she just want to turn everybody against me. And you, I've been knowing you longer than I've been knowing, I mean, longer than she been knowing you. And y'all really wasn't friends for real. If you really want my opinion, I believe that. I don't believe y'all was friends the way you either saying y'all was friends or the way you even thought y'all were friends. 
I don't believe Mel is a friend to nobody. That's just my opinion. I've been saying this since I met the girl. She's not a friend to nobody. But um, Destiny says, well, look, I even tried to be a good friend to her because I held you accountable. And they did the flashback, and she did. And Martel was like, yeah, you should have did that. You should have did that. No, yeah, she should have because she was down bad, Martel. You, you, she did everything she was supposed to in that moment. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't think the whole friendship and trying to figure Mel out is even worth it at this point. But Mel, I mean, Martel did say she was being a good friend of uh, Mel, and he hopes that they find a way to mend it. Do I believe that? No, but it was cute to say. Let's move on. Miss Wanda go pull up on Tisha looking for Marceau to see if he could cut the check. Okay, so she goes by Tisha's house, and Tisha was like, oh, he ain't here, he had black. But what's up? And she was like, well, girl, I can't even see if your husband was going to cut the check, because I'm ready to get paid and start my business. And Marceau, oh, Marceau, Lord. Tisha says, well, you know, he wanted to help you. He is going to help you. But, you know, he wanted to make sure that you're really putting your best foot forward. And then out comes Miss Wanda's business license. I was like, go ahead on, Miss Wanda. Go ahead on. Miss Wanda got her business license. So, um, she was like, yeah, you know, look at it, look at it. And so Tisha goes, see, this is what we needed for him to see, that you're making the right strides and the right steps. She was like, but I got to let you know, I had to convince him because he didn't like the fact that you was questioning him about the rumors. Well, we want to know what's going on. And I feel like Ms. Mind is the only one going to ask the way we want to know. So don't penalize her for getting the tea for us. But anyway, um, Tisha goes on to say, yeah, he's going to do whatever I tell him to do. You know, I, I have a way of persuading him to do what I want. When it started. Is this because you did find out he was cheating and you told him the only way you won't divorce him is if he start doing what the hell you say? That's the only reason I can see this because you ain't never had no say so with no more so. Never. So now that you all of a sudden have it, girl, go, go lay down, go lay, go lay. Anyway, oh, she also offers mentorship to her mom and told her she can go down there to, uh, to, uh, what's the name of the black and uh, shadow one of the cooks, and she's gonna give her the financial mentorship and all that stuff. That's what I'm talking about. Black people helping black people. Go ahead on fight the power. Um, in that conversation, she mentions that she talked to Kimmy about the pajama jammy jam, and you know, Miss Wanda was just like, because oh. you know she don't see it for Kimmy. But she was like, yeah, I talked to Kimmy. And Kimmy told me guess who was there, and she said who? She said Kiki. She said what Kiki? My niece Kiki. Yeah, Miss Wanda. Your niece Kiki was at the party. Pajama jamming it up. And she was like, girl, what? And then Tisha had to let her know that. Kimmy said that basically they was dragging for you, fam. They was dragging for me, mama, all up and through the party. And Kiki was the main corporate in their dragging. And Ms. Wanda said, see, I done told you. Just because they family don't mean nothing. Something, your family can be the snakes too. And I done told you before too. Don't trust people who buy shoes without no shoe box. What the hell does that mean? Who said, oh, who, I'm trying to think. I feel like I've seen shoes outside of a shoe box. No, well, no, yeah, at Marshalls and stuff. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I'm so slow, y'all. But yeah, um, I guess maybe she feeling like that's a character issue. Um, yeah, it is. Kiki, you're dead wrong. I don't care what nobody say. You don't be my cousin and go and sit in, in my enemy's face. And talking about me. Don't sit in my friend's face to talk about me. Period. Like, Kiki, you're dead wrong. And, that, and that's just what it is. But basically, Miss Wanda says she a snake. She said, Kimmy's still a snake too, but she's shedding a little of her snake skin. Girl, I see you know what. Um, I, This is too much with Miss Wanda. But Miss Wanda brings up and says, um, yeah, after Miss Wanda said she was a snake, I'm sorry. Tisha was like, but that's my cousin. You know, I don't want to really, you know, do it dirty like that. And she was just like, so what? She was just like, your cousins be the ones who do it to you the most. She basically says, Ms. Wanda says that Kiki is jealous of everything. Or she didn't say jealous. She says she's image of Tisha's life, image of Tisha's marriage, image of Tisha's success, image. And I'm like, is she saying image or does she mean she's uh, jealous? Or like, what is she trying to say? Like, image? Maybe it's the Huntsville thing. Or maybe it's just a Miss Wanda thing, because y'all know how she talk crazy. But she basically said she's jealous of everything. And she feels like Kiki should have told um, Tisha that she went over there and they had that conversation. If she wasn't being 
on the, you know, cutthroat. I agree. If you weren't being cutthroat, you would have said, hey, girl, you know, I went to the pajama party, girl, before you get back, this is what was said. But she was being vindictive because she already said she felt the way because she felt like Tisha told her business to Mel and Martell. Now, what is this business? Now, Kiki, them people going to go looking to find out what the hell this business was. You need to stop bringing this up. Because when they find it, it's going to be your ass. It's going to be your ass. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, she basically said that Tisha hide your everything. Your family be the ones to do it to you worse. And she ain't lying. Let's move on to the next scene. Mel go see Tiffany at work. So Tiffany's at work in this nice building. I don't know what she's doing. But she got a good job or whatever from the looks of it. Mel goes in there when they start talking about uh, kids. I guess Tisha, not Tisha. Tiffany wants to have more churn. She was like, but I don't know how it's going to look, you know, because I'm trying to do this business. I don't know how this really going to work. And Mel was like, girl, look, I used to put the pen in the office and had them churn and work with me. As you should. Girl, look, you got to do what you got to do when you a, a mother. You have to do what you got to do. But it's just like, I don't know, Tiffany, you just don't look like you of childbearing age, fat. I know you say you're like 32 or something, but. I don't know. Somebody who know Miss Tiff, Messy Tiff, let us know how old she really is. Because I don't know, girl. It's just not getting in her early 30s. You just look like you in your early 40s. Not that you look bad, because you don't look bad, but your aura gives grown, grown woman. You know what I mean? That's just the vibe I get from you. But yeah, she won't try to convince uh, Crazy Lou, Big Lou, to have another baby. Okay, that leads into a conversation about her going to find her uh, biological dad. She said she found her biological mom, and because it was a state adoption, she could find somewhere her biological dad, that did be. So, um, yeah, because she wants to know how it's going to, you know, know, about, know more about her medical history, because when she was pregnant the last time, she said she bled so much she had to get a DNC. I'm not sure if a DNC is like an abortion or whatever. I'm not really sure if it is. Um, is. I'm so sorry she had to go through that. Just the whole bleeding and all that stuff during pregnancy. I'm just sad she had to go through all of that at all. Um, I don't wish that on anybody. Even though Messy Tip get on my nerves, I don't wish anything like on that on, on her or anybody else. That's just me. Um, but yeah, she wants to go find her Paul. And Mel was like, "Well, who are all going?" And she said, "Well, just me and Big Lou." And Mel was like, "You know, I'm good at being a detective. I don't know if it's because I'm a Scorpio or whatnot, but um." I'm good at finding out what's going on. And so Tip goes, oh, where well, you want to come? And I said, well, didn't you just say your husband was going? What, you want to uninvite him? Because I'm pretty sure it ain't going to be all true, y'all, on this trip. That don't even make no sense. So you just uninvited your husband to something so important to go play with Mel? Talking about Mel going to ask the right questions. Girl! All right, uh, Carmen San Diego, go sit your ass down because she about to lose her husband trying to bring you down there to find her Paul. Let's move on. We move to the next scene. Miss Wanda goes to check Kiki, baby. That's what you got back here. Miss Wanda goes to check Miss Kiki. She knocks at the door. Kiki opened the door and said, ooh, I didn't expect you. If I knew, I, if I knew you was coming, I would have been a little bit more on guard. But come on in. Miss Wanda came in, took her fur off. It was full, but it was fur. Took it off, draped it across the other side of the couch, and they sat down. Kiki goes, oh, excuse all my boxes I'm unpacking. I just moved in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but would you like something to drink, some wine? I know I got my uh, wine in a plastic cup, but I'm being a little uh, hood rich right now. And Wanda, Miss Wanda said, oh, you being a little hood bitch. Child, Kiki said, I'm going to leave a hood bitch to you. Ooh, that was a good one, Kiki. But don't disrespect Miss Wanda like that. Anyway. So they get to talking, child. Um, Kiki basically says, well, you know, I, I know you know I spoke to Tisha. That's probably why you here. And Miss Wanda goes, yeah, that's exactly why I'm here. Why is it that you felt the need to go sit in front of these girls and talk about my child? Like, what makes you think that that was okay? Kiki tries to say, I didn't talk about her. Her name came up. And then the conversation ensued. But ultimately, she was talking about me and to them, and that wasn't okay. And Miss Wanda said, but maybe she was talking to you about, well, talking to her friends, who she thought were her friends at the time. It wasn't maybe that deep. Well, it, that's wrong. If she, We don't know what the hell happened. If it was me to know information for Mel and Martell, then I understand. But if it wasn't, Tisha, you was being messy. On the flip side, that was so long ago, 
Like y'all said, y'all done already slept five and had drinks and cried. Why is you still bringing that up, girl? What is going on? Miss Wanda had to ask her, how long ago was this? And she hollered, oh, this was about four, five years ago. Four, five years ago? Miss Wanda said, bitch, you out of order. <laughs> As she should. Girl, you need to go sit down. Miss Wanda said, you're being messy. You over there talking to the messy women's. They messy women's. They messy women and you all part of it. Don't be one of the messy women's. And Kiki was just like, look, I'm tired of this shit. I've already had to do, I've always had to defend myself. Y'all always pitted us against each other. Been doing this since we was like 13. And Ms. Wanda goes, no. What happened was, y'all was raised in a house home, meaning they was raised in a house. And we was raised in a project. And y'all thought y'all was too good to be around us. And your pa ain't gonna let you come around us. I ain't gonna lie, I relate. I understand. Everybody black got family who come from the bottom or who lives in the bottom and people who live decent. Hell, you might even have people who live really, really good. But we all know the people who live in here don't necessarily ne deal with the people who live in here. And the people who live in here act like they're way better and put their stick their nose up to the people that live down here. I get it. I'm not going to sit up here and act like that couldn't have been the situation. I wasn't there. But I'm not going to act like that couldn't have been a situation. Because that is definitely doggone um, the way it typically goes in black households or in black families. Um, basically, Kiki says her father and Miss Wanda had a beef. And basically, because they didn't like each other, they used to always throw around the J word, the jealous word, and pin the two girls against each other. Basically, uh, he, her dad would say that Tisha's jealous of him of, of Kiki, and then Miss Wanda would say Kiki is jealous of Tisha. Okay, this is my thing. This is the way it looks. I may be wrong, but this is the way it looks. From the sound of it, growing up, Kiki was the it girl. Kiki had the, the nice things, the, the you know, all of the things. And then Tisha, probably growing up in the project, ain't really had much. They probably, if they was hood rich. You know, in the project, she probably had gave her nice clothes and all that stuff and dressed her up nice. You know, because hood people think that's, you know, compensation or whatever. But I don't think that, I think that maybe, may, as children, and it happens, maybe Kiki and her family used to really, you know, look down on them. But now that Tisha is an adult and successful, famous, because there is a level of fame because she's on the show. She has a successful marriage on multiple businesses. How many degrees? See, the tides have shifted. And I feel like Kiki feels some type of way about that. Because when Miss Wanda said you want her life, I get it. I get it. I'm not saying that it's true. But I get how she can think that. Because that's how it happens. You get the ones that's from the bottom when they come up. The ones who has always been up, they don't like that. I'm, and I'm not all the time. But a lot of times it's very, very true. And I think that could be what's going on in this situation kiki denies it kiki said girl jealous of what never been wanting to be jealous of her um i came back around when, when i was like 15 and and miss mama said and uh tisha's life has been hell ever since i said oh lord listen this is just my only my per my personal opinion i think the parents like kiki said her mama and daddy had sibling rivalry and they didn't like each other and they did put the kids against each other. They really did. That's just how I feel. Y'all put each other, y'all put them churning against each other, and you're still doing it to this day. Ms. Wanda, if it ain't true, then you are putting a competition on them that don't need to be there. If it's not true. But if it is, you still putting a competition on them. But I understand. Like it is what it is. We all got the bougie cousins. Everybody know we got the bougie cousins. Um, and they do act like they're better than you. They do. But then when you grow up and you realize you got more than them, then they feel some type of weight. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, let's not act like we don't know what's going on. But um, Kiki feels like Miss Wanda and her daddy made them a competition. And Kiki getting her confessional and said, look, one thing we all know is Miss Wanda going to come up and uh, defend Tisha if nobody else will. Well, yes, Tisha's old enough to fight her battles, but that's her mama. I can't tell her how to mama. Let's move on. And plus, Miss Wanda don't do no wrong to me. Say what I say. Anyway. Uh, we move to the last scene. Lou and Tiffany. Tiffany all uh, rented out an Airbnb to have a romantic dinner. Had the violinist. No, what? Not a pianist. A saxophone man. Saxophonist. Is, is that the word? Whatever. And then she had a chef. 
So she invites Louie now. I ain't gonna lie, Messy Tick, you look good, girl. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, you was fine. You was fine. You did. You looked it fine. You looked it fine, girl. You looked it good. You look, Maybe, I don't like the curly hair. Keep it straight, fat. You looked it good. When, t when Luke spent you around, I said, oh, yeah, you been working out. You look good, fat. You look good, Messy Tiff. Now, I'm going to give you the compliment when, you, when you're doing right. I'm, I'm, when you're right, you're right, and when you're wrong, you're wrong. But you was right tonight, you looked it good, until you got wrong. So they sit down, child. First of all, is it not awkward to have the chef and the, the saxophonist man, whatever you want to call him, just sitting in the back watching? That's weird. I'd be like, all right, y'all. Y'all go outside or something, or go, go lay down or something. I'm going to call you when we need you. Like, ooh, that was a little awkward. So he sits down. And basically, she says that she did this because, you know, she's happy where they are um, in business. They're growing their business and all that stuff. Lou said she didn't surprise me with a wedding, so this don't surprise me that she would do a, do a dinner. But he's happy where they are as far as business-wise and where they're going. And then she springs on the fact that she wants to have a little Lou. Big Lou said, how are you going to do that with all this work you got going on? How are you going to put a baby in there or fit a baby in, in the equation where you are so busy? She says, well, you know, the kids, they're getting older. They're, they don't want to really be around me. You know, one of them is driving and the other one goes with him. So now it's just like, you know, when they're going, they go by their perspective, daddies. It just be, you know, boring in the house. Just us. Big Luke was like, yeah, and that's Mr. Nasty time. What is you saying? I like I like the alone time. Like, what, what, what are we talking about? But, um, yeah, Mr. Tip ain't trying to hear all that. Messy Tim wants to have another baby. But Big Lou, I don't know. I don't know if he's really here for it. But she brings up the fact that she spoke to Mel because for some odd reason he asked how everybody was doing. Why? This is y'all dinner. Why are you checking on everybody else? But she said, yeah, speaking of, I did speak to Mel and I invited her to go to Wisconsin or wherever, Utah, wherever they're going, to look for her daddy. Now, Big Lou automatically feels away, as he should. How you going to disinvite your daddy to bring this girl? Somebody out here making it make sense. How do you how do you disinvite your husband on a trip to find someone so significant to your life, such as your child, your, not your child's father, your father, I'm sorry, to invite a friend who may not even be your friend in another year or so? Lou feels a way about that. He should. Lou get in the confessional and was like, look, bad enough your baby daddy met your mama. He helped you find her. This is something I wanted to be here for so, to help you find your father. But as a husband, I'm going to go ahead and support you. Lou, you crazy. I would say Mel ain't going no goddamn well. I'm coming. Period. She tries to bring up the fact that he don't like traveling with her. Dad, even if he don't like traveling. This is something different. Now, y'all supposed to be the transparency couple. And y'all supposed to be the couple goals. But you fucking it up now, sis. You can't uninvite your husband to something so important. If it was just like y'all were going just on a regular vacation, I understand turning it into a girl's trip. But... You gonna find your father because you said Mel gonna be aggressive enough to ask the questions? That's what your husband is for. I thought that's the purpose of having a husband. To be aggressive when you aren't. Make it make sense. Lou, you better than me. Cause hell no. Hell no. And then furthermore, you say he ain't even never met your mama, but the baby daddy did. Why is this? How is it that you just met your mama with the baby mom, the baby daddy met her, but your husband has not met her? Oh, Tiff, y'all ain't gonna make it fat. You got a lot of reevaluating to do in your relationship because this ain't looking too good for you. This is not looking too good. Oh, uh, Lou, you better get a hold of your wife. Now, you can sit up there and say, I'm gonna let it be a girl strip, but this is where it starts and the ball keeps rolling down the hill, down the hill. Now, you holler, oh, I'm gonna I'm be supportive. Shit me. Wouldn't have been me. Would not have been me. Supportive, my ass. I'm not being supportive of a goddamn thing. You don't invite your friend to something so important, especially something that I wanted to be here for, for you. If he, had, if the shoe was on the other foot, Tiff, you would be sick. You would not like that or appreciate it. But Lou, you got to put your feet down. But we know you ain't going to do that shit. You, you still ain't put it down with Martel. I mean, Marceau. So, um, yeah, okay. But, um, that was the end of the dog on episode, girl. Look. <sighs> we did a, uh, they did a four show or foreshadow of the season 
Um, I'm assuming we're at mid-season since this episode six, but you know, Love and Marriage Huntsville normally have like 30 episodes a season, but you know, now that they got Love and Marriage DC or Potomac, maybe the, the own people say, look now, y'all gonna have to cut the, cut it in half. You put half over here and half over there. We ain't got no money. So that's probably why we only gonna get 12 episodes. But child, when I tell you, more so and Tisha and Miss Wanda could have a spin on by themselves, because baby, that family fight looked like it was about to go down. And Marceau was standing up with his wife and was about to throw down with his wife as he should. Girl, look, I can't wait to see what's going on. I can't wait to see what's going on. Because see, I want to see about the family on the other side of the tracks. That's going to be the season right there. Uh, Carlos King, give Miss Wanda and uh, Marceau and Tisha their own show. We could, we could do them separate. I mean, let them show up on Love and Marriage. But we could do them separately because, baby, when I tell you that family looks like it had all the tea and I need all the tea, girl, uh, Carlos King, get these uh, people they on show. Please get these people they on show. Anyway, y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all uh, thought about this week's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you later. Bye.